So now what are we gonna do? Okay. Liver, large stack, large intestinal organ, produce. I'll say bile. Bile for sure. Where bile? This is bile. See how the team is being repeated? That's the team and team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Infested. Gallbladder. Where it is stored. Gallbladder. Look, look how many words are. Um, science, vocabulary, and verbs. Almost every word has pink or yellow. So wow. after highlighting the verbs and the, the scientific vocabulary terms, now let's move to the themes and the rings. So, what's the theme? Someone to tell me what's the theme. Uh, my name is John Lavasser. I'm a, a doctoral candidate at uh, American International College in Springfield, Mass. I'm also a high school teacher at Springfield Central High School in Massachusetts. Uh, I teach biology and chemistry, and now I teach biology and chemistry uh, almost exclusively to uh, EL learners, students who are English language learners. What are the factors that make you a student here? Well, you're young, you're high school age, you live in Springfield, all of those factors mean that you go to this high school, right? And so for the last uh, five or six years, I've been trying to develop uh, systemic functional linguistic lessons, mostly focusing on functional language analysis. So Springfield Central High School is a very diverse community. Uh, you can see on the graphic that um, uh, the percentage of students that don't speak English at home and the percent of students that um, are officially ELL. We have more than 20 home languages, more than 20 different languages sp are spoken by the students at home. That number is also very hard to uh, count because, like for example, students from East Africa, their language, their home language will often be listed as Swahili or Key Swahili, but the truth is, is that they speak a local language at home or with their parents they speak Swahili as a national language, and now they're here uh, working on their English. So um, a lot of our students have um, have a variety of language backgrounds. Tema. Or, or Suheto. So we call the English language learners ELLs, and I like to coin the term ALL because all students are academic language learners. So all of these techniques that, I, that I've embedded into my lessons are important for every student. It's not just the English language learning students. This benefits all students. So uh, I've taught um, uh, different classes using the uh, functional language analysis techniques. But uh, I, was, I was teaching one ELL chemistry class, my first ELL class, and it became apparent to me pretty quickly that uh, what, I was, what, I, what I had learned how to do and how I was a teacher was not going to work with that population. My whole technique was to put on the big show, um, explosions and, and PowerPoints and, and uh, humor and uh, just uh, a big show. And that wasn't going to work with the ELL population. <laughs> Let's get one of these slides ready. Get out of these slides written. Let's get one of these slides written. Let's get out of these slides written. From teaching chemistry, which transferred over to teaching ELL students, was that unfortunately most students, the group of students that are the all students, weren't taught as a rule, they weren't taught the basic math that it requires to learn chemistry. Not only did they not know how to solve uh, rates and, and proportions, but they didn't know how to solve basic y equals mx plus b problems, or even multiply and divide fractions. So it, it was very difficult to teach the mole problems, or the stoichiometry problems, or the percent composition problems, if they didn't have this math. And what I learned through the process of teaching chemistry was, if you want to be a successful chemistry teacher, you have to be willing to teach the math. You have to be willing to slow down, 
not cover as much chemistry so that you can uh, teach how to solve the basic math problems so then they can transfer that knowledge to learning chemistry. As a chemistry teacher, if you're not willing to teach the math, you really aren't willing to teach the chemistry or you're not going to teach the chemistry. Same thing with um, students who are EL learners. If you're not willing to teach how the language functions, you're not really willing to teach any content, whether it's history, whether it's biology, whether it's chemistry, uh, whether it's ELA. You've got to be willing to teach the vocabulary and the structure of the language. Can you tell us what you did? Oh, okay. So I marked population growth here because it, um, it's like a, I'm starting to identify where, what are we talking about basically. Um, when we see that a lot of this um, theme or theme, theme patterns are repeat, when we usually have theme, theme patterns in a paragraph or a body, um, and it's basically what we are talking about the most of the time. So when we have like a theme ring, we are just um, identifying, you know, a, a point in the in the body. The next sentence, fever is made of the cellular cell wall found in plant cell. I have a question. Is found not a verb? I found money. What about mix of cell? I found money. The cellulose wall found in plants. What do you think? Yes or no, guys? Yeah. Is a verb found? Yeah. So, what are verbs in this sentence? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What is... I think it's the only mm -hmm. verb in this sentence right now. Okay, let's move to the next sentence. Fats are the most concentrated energy source at the lip. So over the years of trying to develop these lessons, I've pretty much settled on a few things as far as what I embed into a science lesson. Uh, I might want to have, let's say, three different written assignments or three different textual based assignments. I want to do some sort of language analysis, some sort of functional language analysis, cover in as much depth as I can at grade level content knowledge, which includes the vocabulary and vocabulary building and an explanation of whatever that content is. I think it is not the theme because the theme is what the sentence you're talking about. Okay. And we most of the time start by the verb to the extension of the sentence. So, like right here, the first one we have the biosphere is the proportion. It is what or the biosphere is about. So I think the second sentence is also according to the first sentence. So I think the second sentence should also be the and then I also want to talk about some aspect of the lesson that is conceptual. And what I mean by conceptual is bigger than just biology. For example, in biology we often talk about evolution, which in math is nothing more than change over time. The idea that things change over time is not unique to biology, so it's conceptual. Uh, another thing that I want to incorporate into every lesson is some sort of graphic in, uh, interpretation. Not only uh, see a graph or a graphic representation of something and interpret it, but I also want them to be able to create graphic interpretations of the of textual content. Based on the reading, the number one, we gotta we gotta complete the blank blank space spaces right here, but. Number one is like a little bit harder for me because uh, I understand the yes, question. The first one is population. The first one is population. I think you're right. Yeah. Because you see more than one fish in the picture. Yep. And they're all the same species. Yeah. Well, whether you're teaching science, uh, for both teaching science and for teaching English language learners. I think that one of the most important parts of systemic functional linguistics and functional language analysis that you can teach is nominalization. But we just did see a nominalization. What was the nominalization we just saw? Elimination. Elimination. What is the verb? To eliminate. To eliminate. So elimination is a nominalization there. And examples of nominalization. Evolve, the verb evolve, can become evolution. The, the action of evolve 
becomes the idea or the concept of a concept of evolution. Introduce, introduction, instruct, instruction. Why I find that this is so important is because it doesn't matter what your home language is. It doesn't matter where you're from in this world. There's going to be a word for the relationship between form and function. There's going to be a word for change over time or an expression for change over time. Once you understand that concept in, in one language, you can then transfer that knowledge to another language. Once you understand a concept in one subject, you can transfer that knowledge to the other subject. And so I find that uh, nominalization is a really important part of teaching um, academic texts, and particularly science texts. So that's one language feature that uh, I try and drive home. What are the three keys to success in my class? Learn. Do the work. Do the work correctly. Learn the material. Friends, that's why we come to school. So the nominalization of the verb to conclude is conclusion. And I don't really have any conclusions for you. I don't have uh, a grand sum up because this is still a work in progress for me. This is very much a labor of love uh, because I love what I'm doing and I'm so grateful that um, systemic functional linguistics and functional language analysis has become part of my practice as, a, as an educator. Um, but I haven't perfected it by any means, um, and um, I hope maybe in a few years I'll be able to have something uh, more, but I, I'm convinced that by teaching language functions and the, and the specific disciplinary uh, language features that are unique to history and to chemistry and to biology and to physics, and to mathematics uh, that by doing that you only benefit your students whether those students are English language learners or whether they are all students academic language learners.